Well, what a tremendously exciting time. We hope for everybody in this room and beyond in the Schenectady and Capital District regions, this is truly an opportunity of a lifetime, uh, not just for Clarkson and not just for the former Union Graduate College, uh, but we believe for everybody, and I'll get to that in a second. So Tony Collins, the president of Clarkson University, a person that couldn't be any more excited to be in front of this crowd. Thank you all for coming out and thank you. Well. So I'm coming off, uh, I co-chair the, the Governor's Economic Development Region up in the North Country, and so I'm coming off where I actually asked a question uh, last Friday, and the person that was going to answer the question, halfway through my question, went to sit down. And he said, well, I thought you were just making a comment. I said, no, I'm going to get to a question in a minute. <laughs> so on that basis, and I'd like to acknowledge my wife, Karen, my continuously positive critic somewhere. Thank you, Karen, for helping me out. Being around here. So we're going to move. So welcome. I'd like to acknowledge a number of special guests, and I will uh, read them. So Gary McCarthy, the Mayor of Schenectady. Gary? Where's Gary? He was here. And uh, staff from both Senator Hugh Farley and Assemblywoman Addie Jenny Russell are, are, are here. Assemblywoman Angelo Santa Barbara. Uh, who is here and will speak later on. And someone who is very special to us from the class, I feel like a hockey announcer or something, from the class of 1971, your Congressman Paul Tonko. <laughs> also, we have a number of trustees from both institutions. It turns out, by the way, that the Federal Department of Education, we keep the original UGC uh, board of Trustees for a little while longer, and so they do exist, And so, but from Clarkson we have Charlie Craig, Mark Dwanzik, Bob Goldman, Rick Griffith, Walt Robb, Frank Schmader, Gene Spence. Gene, I'll ask you to stand as the Chair of our Board of Trustees. And if you're a little bit confused, that's okay, we're sometimes confused as well. Walt Robb was a UGC Trustee, is now a Clarkson Trustee. I think one of the things that underscores this, this, we call it an adoption, not a merge, the adoption, because it's much more about family than anything else. One of the things that underscores it is our commitment to all of the elements of the merge, and that is that the, some of the UGC former trustees will come onto the Clarkson board. We, we adopted Walt instantaneously. It was love at first sight. Thank you, Walt, for stepping forward. You'll hear from another one that's on that pathway in a moment. But UGC's uh, trustees still existing. Loretta Chris, Denise Gonick. Denise, have you, are you here? I think she was going to be. Uh, and Tom Hitchcock, Michael Newell, I know Michael's here, Peter Schemmerhorn, and Kathleen Teal. I hope they're all here. Welcome. <laughs> now, there were some presidents of other higher education institutions, one of which I know has been and gone, and we look forward to partnering with him. And it's interesting how these associations and unions, no pun intended, can happen. Uh, but Greg Dewey was here from the Albany College of Pharmacy and Health. Uh, I think Christine Duffy from SUNY Adirondack might be here. Christine? Okay. But a very special person to me uh, personally, and I mean that very sincerely, uh, is Stephen Ainley, the President of, of Union. Stephen? Way back there. Uh, you may or may not know, but, but Union and, and Clarkson uh, are both friends and foes. Uh, foes sometimes on the athletic fields uh, and uh, certainly friends in many other ways. And I am particularly pleased, Stephen, that you're here. And I'm going to end my remarks by saying there is a golden opportunity uh, for New York State and the Albany, or the Capital District region in particular, to really become the gem of the nation's higher education institutions. I mean that very sincerely. We have such an array of talented institutions of, of, of higher education, colleges and universities, with everything that you could possibly want. And frankly, I see that we can be a magnet that will attract talent not just across the nation but around the world. And so this is not a competitive scenario 
But I look forward in particular to partnering with Union. I know they've got activities up in the Adirondacks. But more than that, for this state and this nation, this can be the gem of higher education. That's the mindset that we're approaching it with. And I believe that everybody in this room feels the same way. So Stephen, thank you for being a friend and a partner. Now, when I talk about partners, and the good news is I'm almost finished my, for my first round. Uh, when I talk about partners, this could not have been achieved without trust and a personal relationship that almost had to be instantaneous. Laura Schweitzer, where are you? Laura. So it's not often that you're awoken at your desk when an email comes in and it's from someone that says, would you consider to be a merge partner with an institution? I woke up, looked carefully, thought I might be dreaming, but I said, what an opportunity. It probably wouldn't have gone one return click further if it hadn't have been for my personal knowledge and respect for Laura. So thank you. Now, I will tell you one small humorous incident. This happened back in November, I think, and it turned out that my family and I, everybody in my family, it's a large entourage, we all headed to Australia for a couple of weeks of vacation. The last day there, we were sitting, one of our daughters, the only Clarkson graduate we have in the family, and I looked at the northeast and said, Syracuse, Sydney, Sydney, Syracuse, I'm going to Sydney. So she's living down there, we're in her apartment, and we're about, we're about to get a cab to go to the airport, about half, and I get an email from Laura, and she says, can you respond to these questions from my trustees? So I said, holy smoke, you know, this is the, my, my life's passing in front of me. What a golden opportunity. It's about, I, how can I do it? Within an hour, I had responded to all of those questions. I sent them off and she responded right back. No, I was only asking, could you respond to them? <laughs> it's all true. So let's move along. Laura Chris, who we've come to after we, uh, we, we fell in love with Walt, the next one in line was Laura Chris. Laura is the Executive Vice President, Director of Retail Banking, New York at Citizens Bank. Uh, she, she is a, a, a UGC alumna and trustee. Uh, Citizens is one of the 10 largest commercial bank holding companies in the United States, ranked by assets. Her honors include American banker, as a member of the RBS Citizens Top Women in Banking Team, Woman of, Woman of Excellence by the Albany Colony Regional Chamber of Commerce for Achievements in Private Sector Management, and as a 40 under 40 by the Capital District Business Review as a young professional making a difference in her business community. And that was only yesterday. So with that, <laughs> please welcome Laura to the stage. The podium. Thank you, Tony. Those were very kind words. So it is uh, my privilege to say a few words uh, on behalf of Union Graduate College Board of Trustees and our alum. So I want to tell you, we feel so fortunate that we found such a, such a serendipitously perfect fit uh, with this merger with Clarkson University. You know, it's a university that has this strong and visionary leadership and Tony, which you're, you're meeting him uh, here tonight, but also an extraordinary board of trustees. It's a university with a strategy that we have a, we actually present a superb opportunity for uh, in this, um, this adoption. Uh, and we also uh, find it as a university with some wisdom to allow us to continue what we do so well and take on the lead of managing and operating the Clarkson University graduate programs. So for us, we didn't really dream ahead. We couldn't have dreamed that we would find ourselves in just such a fortunate and wonderful position. It is a little bit hard to let go, but our unwavering commitment to the mission is why this is so right. There is no chance, I need to tell you, it, the chance would be zero if it wasn't uh, for our, board, our college presidents, in Sue Lehrman initially, and in Dr. Laura Schweitzer, which you just heard a little bit about. I'd like to tell you just a little bit more about them and what they did to actually have us 
uh, walk a journey to this moment. They did a masterful job of steering the graduate schools through the process of determining the future, of implementing changes, of taking care of our people, negotiating all those kind of shoals and obstacles along the way as we became officially uh, independent. They created and they nurtured and they sustained an atmosphere of grit and determination not to fail, even under the um, moments of significant challenges. They also, uh, they also gave people like Louis Golub and Walter Robb the confidence to support a mission and all the possibilities of it at times of most need. You know, I also would like you to know there is a fantastic team at this Clarkson University Capital Region campus. It is a collection of super smart, determined, creative, entrepreneurial professionals and they knew how to work together to get things done and face those challenges from time to time. And a great example that I can share with you is in recent months as an interim president, Bela Musitz, where are you Bela? I don't think you, there he is. Bela really demonstrated this so well. He uh, led us really quite magnificently, right up to that moment of official merger when the team officially were employees of Clarkson University. Um, I'd also like to make a special acknowledgement um, and a thank you too to our board presidents and their service, Tom Hitchcock, who is here tonight, Larry Carr as well, and also to the dedicated board of trustees that, that Tony, Tony mentioned a, mission, a minute ago. You know, the mission for UGC is still intact, but the mission of the former UGC is today an expanded one. Uh, I want to um, share with you our view that you know, excellence prevails here and uh, excellence will grow and expand from here um, as we become Clarkson University's Capital Region Campus. And um, share with you, this is a moment of celebration for us. Um, it is um, a celebration for everyone who's been involved in this journey of uh, UGC and I include our graduates and, and alums in that too. There is the celebration, but there's also a moment of pride too. And so I'd like to also say, you know, thank you for coming here and sharing it with us. So, Tony. So, moving now to uh, perhaps um, a, a very prideful moment for Clarkson, but I hope uh, that now includes those alumni from uh, UGC uh, to think of Paul Tonko as one of your own. So, just a second, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul Tonko, in his fourth term as the representative serving New York's Capital Region in class of 71 from Clarkson, serves as the Energy and Commerce Committee the oldest, now here's a point of trivia for you, the oldest standing committee in the House created in December 1795, actually the same year that Union College was founded. Member of the Science, Space and Technology Committee and the Subcommittee on Research and Technology, which has jurisdiction over non-defense federal scientific research and development. He's the co-chair of the Sustainable Energy and Environment Coalition, the Green Voice in Congress, Longtime honorary vice chair of the Alliance to Save Energy, a bipartisan nonprofit coalition that promotes energy efficiency across all sectors of the global economy. And he served in the New York State Assembly for 25 years. Paul, please come to the podium. Thank you very much, President Collins. Tony Collins, a great friend, a great leader. Uh, what a joyful moment to share with all of you in this adoption party. Uh, and I'm gr glad the adoption is taking hold and uh, that the uh, infant, uh, now toddler, now grown, will be in good hands. You know, I've been um, impressed by this audience. It's so huge. And so to everyone who's part of the higher ed community in some format, uh, congratulations on yet another growth opportunity for the state of New York. And I would suggest for this nation, so to the many college presidents with whom I've had the pleasure of working, let me just suggest that within the 20th Congressional District, 
is a plethora of higher education institutions that are a tremendous strength to the work that we do, to policy development, and certainly to the mission that they implement and execute so very well. And I would like to thank uh, President Ainley, Stephen Ainley. President, thank you for being a good friend and a leader who is part of this whole discussion that had been held. President Schweitzer, thank you, Laura, for being a good friend also. President Dewey, uh, being able to uh, refer to a President Dewey for me is always an interesting uh, <laughs> moment. Um, but to all of the leadership of the campuses in this region, thank you. And certainly to our President Collins, Collins from uh, Clarkson. Uh, and to all of the uh, individuals, the staffing, the uh, professionals, the, uh, certainly the professors who make it all work, the members of the board, to Jean and all of the trustees, including Walter, who are part of the uh, network of the mission, the vision, and uh, to the alumni and alumni who are part of that family of Clarkson that are celebrating here today. I see Joe LaMonico, who was part, one of my contemporary buddies, who uh, was just a few years behind me, but he looks 20 years younger than me. So <laughs> I don't want to make you look older by uh, acknowledging that. But to everyone who's part of this partnership, congratulations. You know, I'm reminded that um, when this campus, Van Clarkson College, was begun uh, in 1896, it was about the worker that should not be ashamed. And the pride of work, which instills the sense of mission at Clarkson, Clarkson University is a very humble foundation on which to build. When we look at our growth as a nation, our vision of continued success and growth and prosperity and productivity, it's about capital infrastructure, physical infrastructure, and yes, human infrastructure. That element of the worker, the inventive mind, the innovative spirit, is all the very bit of success that we need in order to go forward, to compete intellectually in what is now a global marketplace. And so we rely on our higher ed institutions to make that all possible, to be able to allow for young people to dream their dreams, to be able to tether that American spirit and go forth from what their ancestors developed within them for a foundation. And so this, this adoption, this coming together, this union, that will take part is going to provide for that expanded growth. Where I sit on energy and commerce and on science, space, and tech with committee assignments, I'm deeply invested in research opportunities, in growing and cultivating that innovation spirit, and in providing for STEM education so that we can introduce to young minds, girls and boys, young men, young women, who need to be educated and, uh, and advanced into that pathway to engineering so that they know the spirit of engineering and science and technology and math, to see the joy that comes with that professional opportunity. And I'm excited about the fact that here through the graduate school, through the graduate college, there will be those missions of enhancing the STEM opportunities and taking that spirit of engineering and providing for yet new product lines that will come to serve on the shelf so that we as a society of great imagination will be able to foster that sense of pioneer spirit. It's what I gained at Clarkson, the sense of pioneer spirit that has served me so very well, the opportunity to be an analytical thinker, to be a problem solver, and to have that ability to think outside the box, or as I call it all the time from the energy perspective, to think outside the barrel. We need that kind of intellectual integrity we need that kind of strength as a nation, that fiber that will take us forward in an ethical fashion that allows for the creative genius to blossom. And so I have always looked for a way to expand my opportunity to work with my alma mater. You folks made it very easy for me. I cast the net and now I have within the 20th Congressional District one more higher ed opportunity with which to connect. And I can tell you, every cornerstone of higher ed, those jewels within the wonderful mosaic in the 20th Congressional District, now are made all the more valuable with the addition of a new partner. So to Clarkson, I say welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, it, uh, it's funny how years fly and decades fly by, but there's always room for new celebration and expanded growth. 
So to everyone who made this possible for your cooperation, for your sense of uh, getting it done, and for the collaborative spirit, thank you for making us yet a more powerful region in a state that has so much to offer, that as an empire state is still looked to for leadership in Washington, I can tell you that. And so I'm thrilled about this. Let's go forward green and gold. Let's go forward all of us. And let's work together and share victory together, perhaps not on the hockey rink. <laughs> but after that, it's all of us working together to lift this region, this state, this nation. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, the New York State Board of Regents is at work. I say unfortunately, they're probably doing good things, but they, that kept us from having Beverly uh, Odekirk, who is by a strange quirk of geography. You think there are some strange assembly and, and senatorial districts in New York State. I'm still trying to work out how we can share the same region. There are nine regents districts, and believe it or not, Potsdam and Schenectady are in the same regents district. Uh, so we have the set now. Unfortunately, she is not with us. Uh, there is a somewhat long speech. So I'm going to take the liberty of being at the podium. Thanks, Bev. We love you. <laughs> yes. You will hear from her again. So uh, now I want to get down to probably one of the most important elements of, of this adoption, and that is bringing together alumni. We absolutely at Clarkson, and I'll get back to a little bit at the end of my talk about culture of the two institutions. That is so important, I believe, that we, we have a culturally perfect adoption. Uh, but the culture really it carries way beyond the great day of graduation. It carries into our alumni. Uh, and, and I want to stress the fact that we have great alumni services and we expect to offer and fulfill our pledge to offer those services uh, to all of the alumni from UGC uh, going into the future. I think it is part of the, 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 the Clarkson network is something that is second to none in terms of uh, lifelong participation and connection. Uh, and so with that, I'm gonna be inviting Mark Green to come forward, a little background on Mark. Dr. Mark Green is a 77 graduate of chemical engineering uh, from Clarkson, he is currently a subject matter expert at O'Brien and Gear in Syracuse, New York, where he develops methods to clean water for reuse or, the dis or for discharge to our lakes and streams. Mark has been very involved in the Clarkson Alumni Association. You'll get this picture. From being an alumni telethon volunteer to hosting several freshmen send-off picnics to being the Central New York chair, cap chapter chair, then serving on the leadership team of the Alumni Council, recently becoming the president-elect of the association. Mark has supported his alma mater since graduation, and more than that. In addition, Mark's wife, Cindy, where are you, Cindy? Somewhere, Cindy. Over there, Cindy. Uh, that just doesn't begin and end there. Well, it kind of begins there, I guess. A 78 graduate and past alumni association president. Their son, Brian, a, two, a 2004 graduate and student Senate president. He was actually on the selection panel or committee that hmm, helped get me. Uh, his daughter Beth, their daughter Beth, a seven, an 07 graduate and leading student advocate for the new student center. So if you've been to campus, you see down the end of that hall, a beautiful building. Uh, it was Beth that really got behind that. Now students have contributed over the years to that in a very, very significant financial way. Uh, so they've, they've, uh, they're, I th I'm not sure if they're here today. I don't think so, just, uh, just Mark and Cindy. With that, please welcome Mark to the podium. I was going to say something like my nine-year-old and seven-year-old grandsons are already playing hockey, so there's a chance to continue the legacy. So good evening. I want to warmly welcome the current students and UGC alumni, Clarkson family, and our Alumni Association Network. Everyone here is part of why this network is now 40,000 strong.
We are an alumni association with 24 regional chapters, five night sites, five affinity groups. In 2015, we organized 219 events with over 3,600 attendees in addition to activities that were held on the Potsdam campus for alumni and that I anticipate will start to be held here at this campus. Some of the largest events in terms of attendance are men's and women's hockey games, which are social events among our alums. We also have an annual hockey telecast, which connected 22 locations and more than 200 alums in 2015 to see a game. Reunion, second uh, largest event that we have, which is a chance for affinity groups as well as cohorts of graduation classmates to get together. Freshman send-off picnics is a huge activity for us, where local alums interact with incoming freshmen and their families before the students head off to campus. Service projects. So we're not only social, we do service too. Typically held on this Saturday near Earth Day, where alums gather to help their communities with spring cleanup activities. And the fifth most popular event is chapter-based sessions and virtual online webinars ranging from personal investment strategies to buying a home, from benchmarking your salary to negotiating higher pay to updating your resume, from assessing what insurance needs you have as you first graduate to retirement planning. These events reinforce camaraderie on a professional and personal level and expand our networks and show the service commitment of our alums. The greatest return on your educational investment in Clarkson comes not from what you learned yesterday, but how you continue to connect to the world around you and engage in the life of the university in the future. I encourage alums and the new alums from UGC to remain active in their own learning, networking with other alum, and to be vigilant in about making introductions of Clarkson to the next generations of students as well as the next wave of employers of Clarkson graduates. This includes research pro uh, opportunities with faculty and ways to make our community stronger. The motto of the Alumni Association is LEAD. Tony hinted on that a moment ago, which stands for Lifelong Engagement, Action, and Devotion. So along those lines, I'd like to identify a few Alumni Association leaders that live in the Capital District and are present in the audience. Gina Boucher, class of 2012, is our Capital District Chapter President. Gina, wave your arms. <laughs> David Trump, class of 1997, is the Association's Clarkson Fund li Liaison and former Capital District Chapter President. Bill Jeffers, class of 01, is the association's career center liaison. Please, please come and introduce yourselves to us, Gina, Bill, David, myself, so that we can connect you and help uh, connect you up with the network and help you navigate it. Thank you, and I encourage you to use the Clarkson Alumni Network to build better futures for you and to bring new people into the professions and opportunities you have. And least but not least, our favorite cheer. Let's go Tech! So we are nearing the end and I'm just going to quickly look here. Uh, just a couple of closing comments and I'm, I'm going to drop down to a very personal level towards the end here. Uh, if you, we have a very interesting the, uh, history, uh, particularly when we were founded, and that is the President, uh, General Francis Walker from MIT, by horseback or cart somehow, in 1896, went to Potsdam to give the, the speech. And if you have a chance to read it, it really is something that resonates throughout, uh, it's as true today as it was when he presented it. Uh, and I think we're following in the footsteps of now 120 plus years or so uh, with, what he, with what he suggested. And that would, is that we shouldn't accept the status quo, hence the Defy Convention tagline. Uh, and we aim right now to be, it, it, the short way of saying it would be, to be America's corporate partner. That runs in our DNA. 
whether it be where we place our students, whether it be where we hold their hands and our hands over research activities, where we develop uh, their workforce. And so that's really one of the main interests for Clarkson to come down to the Capital District campus, uh, is to reach out and truly be something that we think no one else has quite got, and that is being America's corporate partner. It's not time to accept the status quo, and I think you heard from my earlier remarks that we're ready to move in many, in many, uh, many different directions. So New York State is truly a, a, a partner in higher education, uh, and so I'd like to continue by asking uh, Assemblyman Angelo Santa Barbara to come forward and make a couple of remarks, and I'll stay up here, I think, Angelo, right? Thank you. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's wonderful to join all of you today on this, uh, this very, very special occasion. Uh, you know, I say this a lot. Uh, momentum is building in Schenectady. It's an exciting time in Schenectady. Uh, a lot of things are happening, and it's all around partnerships. And each partnership makes our community that much stronger. And certainly this partnership is going to build our community. It's going to make us stronger, offering a world-class education right here in Schenectady to the entire region. As you heard, we're joining a network of 40,000. That's, that's a huge, huge number. It's really going to make a difference for Schenectady. I'm very excited to see where it will take us next. This is exciting news for students, for businesses, and for institutions in our entire area. And with that, I'm very proud to be here uh, today to offer recognition from our New York State Assembly on this wonderful partnership. It talks about both institutions and what it means for our area, what this merger means. Congratulations. Let's hear it for President Collins one more time. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Assemblyman. And Senator Farley actually also left us with a similar uh, certificate from the Senate. So we, we, we feel like we've got full endorsement now, but we're, we're ready to go, board. So thank you to both Senator Farley and to Assemblyman um, Santa, Bar Santa Barbara. Yes, thank you. OK. Now, my last bullet says, connect the speaker's remarks to serving our communities. So I really would like to do that. So you, you'll kind of see, you'll, you'll see, I hope, you'll see through a little window here, a glimpse of what I hope is a truly strong and beating heart of Clarkson University. Now, to begin with, I'd like to actually thank Chuck Thorpe and Bela Musitz for helping to lead uh, this, this adoption. Thank you, gentlemen, and everybody else that's worked with you. I will say, I will say that we thought that we were student-centered until we ran into Union Graduate College. And in a two-way partnership here, we know that we've got a lot to learn from the way that you deal with your students, uh, and, and we look forward to doing that over the years to come, uh, years, weeks and days to come as we push all of this together. So. Thank you, and thanks to everybody in the room uh, that's worked so hard to bring this together. Uh, and, and just two last things. One is that, uh, and, and that's about what, what Clarkson really stands for. Innovation and creativity, uh, entrepreneurship, it really is what runs in our veins, other than green and gold. Uh, and, and, and so we hope to bring that a lot through perhaps Baylor's leadership into Schenectady. Uh, a little known fact is we've, we are going back into some of the buildings that we vacated in downtown Potsdam. We have over 30 startup businesses. We're through one incubator and into another. And we look forward. I just believe that the, the DNA of Schenectady and Clarkson is a perfect match. And so I'm giving you a bit of a hint. This is not just about graduate education. This is much more than that. What are those people going to do? How are we going to help to impact this region? And that takes me to my last point. And so I'm very pleased to announce that trustees, as a minimum, now have you got this? As a minimum, this year and going forward, we're going to be awarding, in addition to any other financial aid, two $5,000 scholarships to high school students out of Schenectady. And we want to partner with the very roots of this community and help raise people to a hope, to a life and a future that they perhaps didn't dream of. And those two scholarships will be named the Walt Robb Scholarships. <laughs> S 
so I hope you understand that we're very sincere in our excitement as, and the opportunity we see here at Schenectady. Thank you for a wonderful turnout.